Hi, Coach. Happy Friday. I uh, just wanted to hear what your thoughts on facing Seattle were. Um, they had 4-0 and in their first first game one and, and then had LAFC with a draw. What are you seeing from them, and, and what do you guys need to accomplish when you head up there? Yeah, um, they're a good team, obviously. Uh, a lot of experience together. Um, some adjustments in the way they are shaping up the team so far this year. It's two games of... of uh, observation for us, but um, a little bit different in that they're playing a, a back three. They have some wing backs that are pretty aggressive and like like to get up the field. Uh, playing with two strikers now with Bruin and uh, Rui Diaz working off of each other. Um, in the early games, Roldan is working underneath them. Obviously, we'll see if Lodero comes back into the mix at some point. I assume he'll fill that role and Roldan might drop back a line. But uh, So they've adjusted a little bit, just their shape, but I still think, you know, their identity is still their identity. They, they like to keep possession, but um, probably more than anything, they do a great job of protecting themselves, not giving up many goals, uh, staying in games, and, and sometimes they take over games, and sometimes they stay in games, and they find ways to win it. So uh, that's just the experience of their group and, and what they've done over a number of years now. And so uh, with a slightly different shape, you know, it's, uh, it is what it is for us. We just need to be aware of the different things they might do and, and prepare ourselves to go there. We want to try to uh, have as much of the ball as we can through the course of the game, um, but make sure that we are, we're trying to move those guys in their back line, create opportunities, and again, protect ourselves. We want to, you know, we want to get through a game where we don't give up a silly goal or two and uh, keep it clean and tight. And um, you need to do that when you go on the road and play a team as, as good as they are. Thanks, Nicky. We'll go next to a uh, question from Scott French. Hey, Greg. Scott, um, right. You signed uh, Koulibaly this week. Uh, Williams, uh, we're, we're waiting on to see if he's going to get in. I'm just wondering, uh, statuses on both of them in terms of joining the team? And then as you're, uh, as you're stepping forward into games three, four, five, what it is you're looking for defensively uh, to improve? Yeah, uh, Williams has been training this week. Uh, he should be available if he gets through everything fine today and fine tomorrow, which we expect. There's no reason he wouldn't. He would be available for the match this weekend. Uh, with Sega, he is in the visa process. Um, hopefully we can get through that somewhat quicker than we have the last couple, but um, he's in, the, in process, uh, and hopefully we can get him here soon. As far as defending in the next several games, I, I, you know, I think... You look at the goals that we've given up. We've given up too many chances, so I think just tightening up a little bit there. Um, there's a number of different reasons for that, and I think we need to clean that up. I think organizing things sooner, getting into the right spots, recognizing situations, sometimes where we lose the ball is mat matters. And so uh, that specifically was a little bit in the Miami game. Um, but the other goals, we've given up a penalty kick. We've given up uh, you know, a set-piece goal. We've given up goals that are... Um, they're preventable with some concentration, with, again, some organization, some things that we can do to help ourselves even before the situations occur. I think we can eliminate a lot of these, these moments that, uh, that are costing us. So uh, that's part of it, um, and that's a big part of it. And then, you know, just front to back defending. Sometimes in games we've gotten a little bit too stretched out from front to back, and it's making sure we stay collectively uh, connected close to each other and, and we're able to support each other in defensive plays and defensive moments. So... Uh, but we're making the right we're making the right progress. I, again, I think um, we take away the set piece goal, we take away the the penalty kick. I know there's one other one in there that I feel like might have been a set piece or something that we needed to um, that we just need to do better on in from terms of organization and execution. Thank you, Greg. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Scott. We'll go next to Damian Calvin with Yellow News Group. Damian, go for it. Hey, Greg, how you doing? Good, Damian. Thanks. Um, Sort of piggyback on the last question there is the goals. Is that just a lack of communication? The guys really haven't really haven't played with each other um, that much. Yeah, I don't know if it's if it's. Uh, I don't think it's about playing together. I think when you when you give up a set piece goal the way we did uh, the second goal the other night, that's just not taking charge in the moment when you have a, a gap between when the foul is called and you organize your team and you make sure that you have enough numbers to deal with what's going on at the front post and uh, and you organize and, and you take care of whatever the opposition is is doing, whether they're overloading the front or the back or 
you've got to you've got to sort that out quickly on the field and make sure you that people are accountable and your line is together and you take care of things and I think that's just you know again within the group on the field in the moment there needs to be some ownership on that situation and and uh, being engaged um, you know some of, some of the other plays I, I just think in general I speak in generalities about our defending I think there is uh, the one thing that we, we need more of is proactive communication to organize things. When do we want to release players uh, off of the line to help us to get pressure to the ball? When do we want to keep them? And that, you know, coming from our center backs, coming from the guys behind the guys uh, who are speaking to the guys in front of them, just so some of the cues, because look, against the Red Bulls, they, were, they played in three different formations over the course of the game. So you have to adapt inside of the game and Players need to communicate to each other and problem solve. That's still a process that we're working through together as a group so that we recognize when teams make adjustments, how we can manage that a little bit better and quicker. Um, but some of that's just proactive communication so that you know reference points are sorted out or, or we're releasing guys to get pressure to the ball so that we're not, we're not dealing with things so close to our goal. Uh, so the, again, the, some of it's a work in progress. Some of it's just personality that we need our guys just to be more uh, more present, more vocal, and more proactive about the information they're giving to each other. And one more, uh, Jonah and Javier, did they check out okay, uh, return to training and everything? Yeah, they're, they're both good. They, uh, they're they fine. They, they trained this week and are ready to ready to be available. Thanks, Damien. We'll go next to Josh Guessman with uh, Corner of the Galaxy. Josh, go for it. Hey, Greg, um, just to follow up on a, a couple different things. Um, one, the, the status of uh, Kevin Cabral and whether or not he's making his way over here to the United States. Um, and then uh, an injury update on Jalen Neal. I think it was a stress fracture, if you yeah. have something on that. Um, and then, uh, sorry, three questions okay. on this one. But uh, Koulibaly, where do you see him sort of fitting in? Is he coming in to start? Obviously, you guys went out to get him for a reason. So how do you see him fitting into the defense? Uh, I'll work those in, in order. Um, the first one was, I had them all Cabral in my head. Cabral status. Uh, Cabral status. This is a, a little bit of a mind boggling one. Today we found out because we were wondering what was taking so long. He'd gone through the process. Uh, there seemed to be administrative error in the embassy, uh, in terms of some paperwork. Uh, we were hoping that they sorted that out today, but they didn't, which means he probably won't get his passport back until Monday, which hopefully he'll travel Monday, um, uh, or at the latest Tuesday. The challenge for us is that means from a quarantine standpoint, it starts to push into another week. And so we thought 100% we were going to have him here this week, and we were wondering what was taking so long, and there seemed to be some disconnect in some of the paperwork uh, between the, the U.S.-based embassy communicating with the one based in, uh, in France, for example. So uh, that's disappointing, but I know he's anxious to get here. He's eager, and we'd love to get him here, but we're just we're looking at next week now, unfortunately, beginning of next week. Uh, as far as Jalen, he has, yeah, it's a stress fracture. He's making progress. He's, um, you know, he's been in a boot, uh, for a couple of weeks. He's starting to do a little bit of activity without the boot, but not too much. It's something that it's a little bit about patience. We need to make this, make sure this thing heals because if it, it's a stress reaction that we don't want to turn into an actual fracture. And so we have to be a little bit patient with that. Um, so uh, as far as uh, Koulibaly, yeah, we brought him in. He's a different, he's a different type of center back than the center backs that we currently have. He's a little bit of a hybrid between playing right back and playing uh, center back. He has um, very, he's aggressive, athletic, um, comfortable, you know, on the ball. Uh, just a different. He's younger, so he kind of fits in that in some of that age profile that we don't have many guys, which is in that 24-ish, 25, 23 range. Uh, which gives us another younger player that we can uh, start to develop and bring along here over the course of the next couple of years. So, again, a little different than the group of guys we have, and he'll compete to start, and it's a competition now. We've got some guys, you know, that that are going to push each other and uh, compete to be the guys who are, who are the starters for the group. Thanks, Rick. Yep. We'll go next to a question from John Rojas. John, go ahead. Thanks, Chris. Um, Greg, thanks for the time. Yeah. With, with, with Jonah and Javier, uh, you already said that they trained during the week, but I, I'm curious with the cramping situation, it's easier and it's more um, effective to manage uh, training loads or playing minutes, or are you planning on do both? Do you need to do both? 
Yeah, neither are related to the cramping. It's, it is, um, you know, we've done some pretty extensive work with him on, on where it's at. It's, it's it, from what we're gathering, it is more related to the, the workload within the match, uh, you know, and the, the intensity, the steps, the, he's getting some, you know, whether it's lactic acid buildup in certain areas of his body, whether it's calves or quads or, um, and we have some solutions which aren't important for this for this purpose, but uh, we have some solutions. But the solutions are going to take a two, three, four weeks just to to adapt a few things with them. Uh, of course, during the week we're, we are we're always managing the load of the guys. We're extra attentive of of uh, Jonah specifically. Um, so and I'm speaking of Jonah, um, but it's it's not really related to hydration or things like that. So we we just have to be attentive and aware. Uh, communicating with them and while we go through the process of trying to adapt some of the things that we are that we're learning that might be helpful to to his cause and his case um, Javier in general is is he's fine we we manage his loads as we do all the other guys we we have different different sort of standards for each guy because each guy is individual each guy has their own injury history each guy is of a different age and has a different uh, background so everybody has their own uh targets that they hit during the course of the week and it's uh and it's about each of those guys doing that through the week so that that they feel as prepared as possible going into the game but also as rested and fresh as possible going into the game so that's uh that's something that we do um and i think our sports science group does a really good job of individualizing and personalizing what everybody gets so that they're they're ready from week to week and match to match thank you and, and one more with this LA Galaxy group that is new for you and some of them between, you know, new to the group, um, does it change the percentage that you put into the uh, analysis of the rival uh, preparing any kind of match? Or is it exactly the same as you're doing since you've been in Toronto and, and you work always with the preparation of a match? No, I, the preparation of the match for me is it's the same. Uh, you know, we always are trying to find the balance of, prioritizing who we are and what we're trying to do relative to our identity and the way we want to play the game. But within that, there's the nuance of what is the opposition trying to do so that we understand um, where we think the gaps are going to be, where we think the opportunities are going to be. Uh, so we add, we add that in also in terms of the preparation. I call that more of a nuanced approach to our, our looking at the opposition, and we, we still prioritize who we are and what it is that we want to, to accomplish. But every game's a little bit different. Every opponent's a little bit different. Uh, and so we, we do tie in, and, and that hasn't changed, you know, and it'll never change, I don't think, until I, I find, you know, continue to find better ways to do it. But um, from where I was, whether it was Toronto or here, we still always prioritize ourselves, and then we, we, we have little adaptations that we might do from week to week, depending on who we play and where we think the advantages might, might come. Sounds great. Mm -hmm. Sean, I think we have time for one more. We'll go to Gio Garcia. Gio, go ahead. Hey, Greg. Uh, thanks, Chris. Uh, I just wanted to ask, I don't know if you were asked this uh, earlier. I hopped on a little late. Um, the Sounders have been playing with five defenders uh, these, these first two games. Um, does, that way, does that change how you guys approach this game tactically and what you've seen so far from the Sounders? Yeah, again, I think it's just like the question before. I think it's one of the nuances that you have to we have to be aware of. Um, does it change things? I, I think it in our mindset we have to be obviously aware of the fact that they they could play five in the back, and that's what they have done. So uh, if that does, yes, it, it'll we have an adaptation and dealing with five in the back or or how we would want to approach that. If they play four in the back, same thing. It's kind of an if then scenario. If you see this, then we do this. Uh, and so then we work to adapt to the different scenarios that we see, whether in the different shapes that the opposition might take up. That's why I knew, kind of referenced uh, the Red Bulls playing in three different shapes the other day, because defensively your reference points change, whether they have a single pivot, a double pivot, three in the back, two in the back, one, one, whatever. It's it, these things can uh, can alter some of the things that you're reading as players and, and how you want to approach a scenario or, or a game. And so. There are things that we're attentive to, uh, but again, all within what, we, what it is we want to try to accomplish, but it, it helps us to, to understand what we're trying to read and, and uh, how we can try to, again, create the situations that we want to create in the match. And just quickly, Anarajo, I believe I think we saw him play a little bit of, as a wing uh, on the game. Do you expect to see that more of Araujo this season? 
No, not necessarily. I think it's something he can do. It was, uh, it gives us a, you know, a different, a different look in, at times, especially with our current group, uh, you know, with Julian is with his pace and his directness uh, to really get behind, whether that's in transition or just to get behind and get these, you know, right footed crosses off at speed. It gives us something and it gives us another, another, especially in this last game, just defensive work ahead of uh, the back line. So it, again, it's uh, I look at players as a, as a set of characteristics, and if we need those characteristics in a position at a certain time, then then we'll utilize that. But it's not necessarily a, a role that I see Julian playing on a any significant basis. It, it just it made sense for the moment, and it, we we may encounter those moments again in the future. But on that game, it was something we just used for the time being.